yesterday when we were actually over at a conference with Dutch Sheets, I felt the Lord speak a word to me, and I, I, uh, I hate to come up and do these sorts of things, so I had to tell Pastor Lynn afterwards, I said, the Lord spoke a word to me for you, and I need to give it to you tomorrow, not today. And that way I was held to this so that I would come up and actually do this. <laughs> The word he said is, you took the baton, and it was with great zeal that you took that baton and you began to run this race. And you had been preparing for a long time up until that point, and you saw that the season had come, that the time had come for you to run this race. But as you continued on with this race, you began to run into adversity, you began to run into trials and tribulation, you began to come into a place where you were dealing with weariness, and there were even times where you began to feel like perhaps you weren't even on the right trail. But in those times, as those times of weariness persisted, the Lord began to place in front of you at, er, at periods along the way what I can only describe like what a marathon runner sees as they are running, and they come to one of those areas where they have water on the tables, and it was a time of refreshing for you. And you would come into these times of refreshing, but they were few and they were far between. And each time you would come into that place, you were tempted to remain there, but you never did. And as you moved along, there have been times where you've thought, perhaps this is too much for me. But you've continued to press forward. You've found your rhythm, and you've pressed on. And the Lord said, something's happened along the way. You've begun to look down at your feet and see your stride. And what has happened in that process is that you've forgotten to look ahead. And the Lord's word for you this morning is look up, look ahead, see that the finish line is near. Remember the zeal with which you first took that baton and see that that zeal returns to you on this day. That you are no longer weary, that you are no longer fatigued. All of those things mean nothing now because you see the finish line. And when you see the finish line, that second burst of energy comes and you press forward into that place. And the Lord went on, and he spoke a word. It was actually the day before he spoke this word, and it was really more for the body of Christ and for this nation. He's been connecting all of these words together. And I'm going to ask, Pastor, if you would unplug and kind of come down here into the middle. I would appreciate it. The Lord spoke a word to me that Sharon, was both... Is Sharon in the building here somewhere? Sharon, anywhere? Can we include her in this. The Lord spoke a word to me that was both, I don't know how to describe it, solemn and yet joyful. (laughs) He said to me, this nation will not awaken without tragedy, but tragedy will awaken this nation. And I began to seek the Lord after that. And I was telling Priscilla about it, and I just was like, I I feel like there's more to this. He's trying to say more than this. And so I just continued to press into him. And it was the following day that he began to fill in the rest of the gap when I asked him, Lord, what about the church? What about the remnant? I said, is it going to require tragedy for them to finally wake up? And he responded back to me. He said, no. And then he gave me a couple of scriptures that reminded me of his word. He said in 1 Peter 4.17, 
For the time has come for judgment to begin in the house of God. And I'm, th- I'm thinking of judgment in the way that most of us think of judgment at that point, like an awful thing in some ways. We, we, t- we tend to look at it like it's punitive. But he goes on and he says in Psalm 1910, that my judgments are more desirable than gold. They are sweeter than honey. And so he says, as I roll out, as this judgment begins to unfold, my remnant is going to awaken. Because I need my remnant to be awake for this season that is coming. Because when the tragedies begin to unfold, these church doors are going to be opening and people are hardly even going to be able to fit in. And he needs for that remnant to be ready. He needs for that foundation to be ready because pastor can't run this race by himself. We've all got to come alongside of him. We all need to back him in this race and say, I'm with you. Because one man cannot do what the harvest is going to demand. It takes a church. It takes a body. It takes a people that are awake and alive in the Lord and ready to respond in obedience to his word. And so the Lord asked for me to do a prophetic act this morning, really more for you to do a prophetic act. And I just want Pastor Lynn and Sharon to stand right out here in the center, if you will. And this is your point to be able to respond to this word. Because if you respond to this word and you say, yes, Lord, this is my desire. This is what I want. Then I want you to come down here quickly. I want you to come down here quickly. And I want you to lay hands on Pastor Lynn and Pastor Sharon right now. And I know not everybody's going to be able to reach them. So just take the shoulder of the person that's behind you. Because we need to remind them in this season, they don't run this race alone. There's a generation that's coming in behind them. There's a generation that's on fire for the Lord. So I want you to look around, Pastor Lynn and Pastor Sharon. I want you to take a good look around you. Because you've run this race and there have been times you felt like you were doing it all by yourself. You haven't seen another runner anywhere on the course. But they've been there all along. And in this season, you don't run alone. So, Father God, I just give you thanks for the awakening that is occurring within the remnant. I give you thanks that you are instilling hope into the hearts of your people once again. I give you thanks that we are no longer walking in weariness, but we have great zeal. Lord, these are times that the prophets have died to see, literally. And yet we are going to be the generation that sees this come to pass. Lord, let us embrace the gravity of this moment. Now the last word that the Lord has is for the body as a whole. And there are some of you here this morning that in your hearts have said, I've heard words like this before, but I haven't seen them come to pass. And you've come to a place of doubt. And as you hear them right now, you still have doubt in your heart. And the Lord, well, I'm not going to pull any punches. The Lord said back to me, Let it be to them according to their faith. And it would be a shame for some of those who have been waiting for so long for this to come to pass to have it absolutely miss them because they were wavering in doubt and unready for this season. Draw near to the Lord and he will draw near to you.